and now we see the different perspectives of uh, uh, a member state and the commission itself in addition we would like to include the stakeholders perspective opinions and the legitimate uh, interest so we are pleased that senior program officer josephine wood is here with us to present the viewpoints of the euro hpc a joint initiative between the eu european countries private partners to develop a world-class supercomputing system here in europe miss wood the floor is yours Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, and thank you very much for the invitation. I think uh, my talk will follow very nicely from uh, the director's talk just now, uh, as uh, I just want to sort of set out how your HPC joint undertaking is an example of how of what she was describing, um, which is to put our ideas and pull them together, uh, and and come up with a project which is in practice, helping to build uh, European competitiveness in digitalization. Um, I'm going to quickly describe what the European joint undertaking is and does because it's brand new and not a lot of people may have heard of it yet, but I'm very grateful to the State Secretary to have mentioned that high performance computing is one of the priorities of the European Union. Indeed, we are a new JU that was set up only uh, in 2020, was autonomous only in 2020. And our role, and we're based in Luxembourg, and our role is to deploy top of the range supercomputing infrastructures across Europe to support your HPC users wherever they are. And I will talk about who the users are a bit later on. We also implement an ambitious uh, research and innovation agenda to help competitive HPC ecosystems and supply in Europe. And the reason we do this is because we've been mandated obviously by member states through the European Union, um, but also because uh, back in 2016, 17, it was it transpired that we did not have enough high performance computing infrastructure in Europe to serve the needs of our European uh, member states and industry. Um, and this therefore led to the Commission setting up this agency with uh, the support of the member states. And this is what we have today. So today our JU is made up of 33 participating states, two private members from the private sector, um, and we are basically a public-private partnership intended on spending in the current MFF uh, 1.5 billion euros and a new MFF uh, we will be spending uh, between uh, e about three and a half billion euros of Euro EU funding, which will be matched hopefully by uh, the member states. We, our mission, as I said before, is to establish this world-class supercomputing and data infrastructure across Europe. And I will just tell you quickly how we will go about it. I'm going to skip the next slide, which is a pretty picture of our inauguration uh, in Luxembourg and go straight to the infrastructure, which I think is what everybody wants to understand and what we're doing. So for now, we are procuring, we are a procuring entity and we are procuring with the support of eight hosting entities located across the European Union, pre-exascale supercomputers and three pre-exascale -pre supercomputers and five petascale uh, supercomputers. These supercomputers will be owned by the joint undertaking in part, and for the petascales will be jointly owned with the, members, the hosting member state. Um, so for now, we've procured seven supercomputers, and we are currently, and we've invested, um, we will be investing total amount of 360 million euros. The timeline, uh, therefore, for, the, for these machines to be operational is ongoing. As you can see, uh, we've already put online Vega, which is a petascale supercomputer in Slovenia, and Meluxina, a super petascale supercomputer in Luxembourg. But come the end of this year and early into next year, we will have petascale supercomputers in the Czech Republic, Bulgaria, Portugal, and then we will have pre-exascale supercomputers uh, coming online in Finland, and in Italy. Um, all this to say that these supercomputers are very nice bits of software and sorry, hardware, um, which we've procured. But the question is, who is going to use them? And I think that's the basis of the pu purpose of this discussion today. 
uh, we will launch access calls for the use of uh, access time to the supercomputers to researchers, small and medium enterprises in the private sector. And we've developed a policy in the joint undertaking in agreement with our governing board of the member states and the commission on who will get access to this computing time um, of the supercomputers. There are different access modes that will be available um, and we uh, aim to attract um, projects, research projects for modeling, visualization um, of projects that have been developed in the European Union and, um, and, need, and need, need supercomputing time. Just to simplify this, what kind, why, would, why would a company need uh, to, to have access to a supercomputer? As we've already discussed and has already been mentioned, the, the, the power of data is going to become more and more important as more and more organizations develop uh, new data sources, they will be able to, they should be able to find a way to, to crunch this data, uh, calculate this data, and the supercomputers will be there to help them uh, to do so in terms of, and then develop their research programs into real innovations which could then be deployed into, into new technologies. And so linked to that we have a very important research and innovation program and this is back to the point that was made earlier what are the tools that the European Union have given uh, have available to it to be able to develop programs where well, we have procurement which is what I've just told you about and of course we have the RNI uh, Horizon 2020 and soon Horizon uh, Europe calls. And here we will be developing always in the context of um, high performance computing and in the future quantum computing, uh, we will be developing, we are, we are launching different calls in HPC technology, HPC software and applications, HPC research and HPC skills and support. And this is how we are building the ecosystem around high performance computing, which hopefully will make the European Union a more attractive place to do uh, supercomputing uh, compared to the rest of the world. So at the moment we have, uh, as you can see in the box of the different calls that we've organized and are currently ongoing. And the most recent one that we've developed is a European high performance computing master's course, which where the course is currently open and the deadline will be on the 2nd of July. I'm now going to move on to a different part of the presentation, which is relevant. The JU was inaugurated, was adopted, the regulation was adopted in 2018. The JU has been up and running since 2020, September 2020. But in the context of the new MFF, um, we've just had uh, a new regulation adopted, almost adopted, which will then, which will give the remit to the new, our remit to our new agency for what we're going to be doing next. So this slide is to explain that the new regulation, we will continue to do the same thing, but we, i.e. to develop, deploy, extend um, into the union, a federated, secure and hyper-connected supercomputing and quantum computing services and data infrastructure ecosystem. We will continue to support the development and production of innovative and computing supercomputing systems based on the supply chain. And we will widen the usage of the supercomputing infrastructure to a larger number of public and private users across the European Union. In the context of that, we have been entrusted with a new program to implement um, and this is a slide which indicative numbers of uh, the different programs, therefore, that we'll be responsible for uh, implementing. The, first, the new big, the new program, the new innovation in European tools, to use the point that was made earlier, is that going to be the Digital Europe program. This will provide EU funding of almost 2 billion euros and will help support projects and deployment. So it's deployment projects in infrastructure, uh, in federating supercomputing services and widening our usage and skills. So in infrastructure, this is about supporting uh, European technologies to go into European, uh, European infrastructure, HPC infrastructures, which would then eventually become the part of the machines that we're procuring. Uh, we will then um, hopefully with the seven supercomputers that we already procured 
but eventually with the new, the next step of the procurement, when we go into exascale supercomputing, uh, we will hopefully be connecting the different supercomputing services together. And lastly, but not least, um, we will be supporting funding in skills, because if we don't have the skills and we don't have the people to work the supercomputers and develop the applications, we will not be able to provide a good a, a, a service to our users. We will then also be having spent, continuing to work on Horizon Europe and supporting technologies in Horizon Europe, applications and international corporations. And last but not least, and this is the hyperconnectivity, we will be uh, implementing Connecting Europe facility to connect uh, the different machines and uh, to start working on data connectivity between the different machines. So that's where we bring the data and the infrastructure together to work together and then eventually build uh, these data um, data lakes, as they're called, that was were, were referred to and data platforms that were referred to earlier. I'd like to point out, of course, that we are also part of the Green Deal and that uh, our supercomputers are extremely innovative machines and may not be and we are trying to ensure that the future machines are as energy efficient as possible um, but equally we're making sure that all our investments and the calls we're making are looking at the next generation of green microprocessors and making sure also that the projects that run on our machines are, uh, are working towards fighting for the future sustainability of our planet. And I can talk about that in the questions and answers later. So to conclude, um, to answer your question, will European supercomputing contribute to build European competitiveness? The answer is, we think yes. By founding the uh, JU, the joint undertaking, the Commission and EU member states set themselves a very ambitious goal, which is to build a world-class high-performance ecosystem right here in Europe. This is not by accident. This is because they want to we, they want the European Union to develop competitiveness in this area. A total of 350 million euros so far has been invested in procuring supercomputers and our efforts are only starting to pay off. So this is only the beginning of the story, not the end. The new, the already Vega and Meluxina, the two new uh, petascales are already online, have already been, are an important achievement uh, towards this ambition. And we look forward to the new uh, regulations so that other um, member states can will consider uh, was working with a joint undertaking to procure supercomputing in their uh, member states, as well as uh, working uh, together with all member states to ensure that the supercomputing resources are available to all Europeans and all European research programs and industrial industrial sector projects. Um, I would also add, although I'm not the nerd, but I have colleagues in my organization who are, these machines are truly remarkable pieces of technology. Um, and therefore we need to be part of the, part of the, ahead of the game compared to our, uh, we need to be ahead of the game for, compared to third countries in terms of the innovation around these machines. We're looking forward to the five other uh, supercomputers that are coming online this year and we're looking forward to possibly even investing in one or two exascale supercomputers once the new regulation is in place and the new MFF is in place. Um, with these supercomputers we will be able to process the millions of data points that European industry and SMEs and researchers are currently developing and strengthen EU's knowledge base in science, technology, machine learning, artificial intelligence, high performance data analytics and Europe, across Europe. We also are researching, and I've not mentioned this yet, on competence centres. This is where and there is one by in each member state. And this is where uh, these, these centers will help users uh, to understand what their HPC needs will be and to help develop HPC skills. Our users will be key. The machines uh, will be able to provide solutions in the area of healthcare. Uh, for example, we're already working on uh, me medical solutions for COVID. 
weather mapping systems, energy efficient systems, uh, modeling for car, energy efficient cars and smart cars, and much, much more. To give you another example, we are these supercomputers can help develop digital humans and digital earths and help experimentation that can be done in silico within, within these machines. Um, and just to be sure that everybody knows what a supercomputer is, this is the ability to calculate huge amounts of data at huge speeds will allow testing and faster research results, which will lead to the possible scaling up of projects into fully functioning and tested innovations ready for deployment. So last point, and this is really important to achieve all this in terms of competitiveness, we Europe will need more qualified people. Um, and so although this is not something I've not heard this said much yet, but we this is why the joint undertaking will also be investing in trying to ensure that more people are qualified, not in general digital skills, but actually in the specific and very specialized area of high performance computing, where we need the people to uh, to help run the machines and develop the applications so that the users have uh, what they need. And this is how uh, this is it. So to conclude. HPC, your HPC is trying to, has the ambitious goal of creating a newly created, new high performance computing ecosystem where it will bring together technology, software and applications and people. On that, I hope that gives you a good idea of how Europe is working on one of these areas in practice. And I'm very happy to take questions later. Thank you very much.